What's going on, guys? It is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics, and we are back again with episode two of that Bolo's Top 10 Comic Book Back Issues to be on the lookout for. That's right, we're going to give you 10 back issues. Last week was the first episode, so we're going right into the second one. Huge success on the first episode, by the way. I can't thank you guys enough for watching, commenting, hitting that like button. And if this is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well and that bell notification so that way you'll be notified when all these videos drop. But Jack, how did you feel last week went? Oh, it was amazing. You know, debuting a new show, you never really know what to expect. Usually you expect to kind of start off slow and build some momentum, but we really came out the door swinging. And again, uh, it's something to understand is this is a living list. So this is not a week to week thing. What was hot last week isn't hot, not hot this week. Uh, this These lists are going to build off of each other. So make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you've got that bell notification set so you are alerted whenever we're dropping another 10 books. Right, and if you have friends that want, would be interested in this, feel free to share this video out. Let people know about it. We are all about integrity and community. Love that community here. But enough about that. We're going to get into that top 10 starting right now at number 10 with Fantastic Four number 47. Now, this is one of those kind of key in human issues. It's got a couple first appearances in it as well, doesn't it, Jack? Absolutely. Now, the big thing right here is Maximus. And if you're not up on your Inhumans lore and you didn't watch that terrible Inhumans TV show, that's probably a good thing. Um, the reality is Inhumans was already burnt spec. It was already books that people invested in and sold. Show already came out, didn't do well. But the beauty is there are seemingly reports that we're going to see the Inhumans re-enter the MCU. Uh, we're going to I would imagine recast everything, redo everything, um, new paint, new polish, give it really the treatment it deserves. And probably the Inhumans won't be like a centerpiece type team like was originally designed for them. They will probably play the background somewhere, whether it's in a Guardians of the Galaxy storyline or a Fantastic Four storyline. And I think that's probably the best place to use them. And I'm starting off talking about this book when it comes to Inhumans. This is a member of the royal family, one of the two brothers who really head up the whole Inhumans lore and the most undervalued of the key issues. It's being overlooked as everybody chases the Silver Surfer storyline and the other key Inhumans books. So Fantastic Four 47 is a book to be on the lookout for. And then rocking the list at number nine this week, we get G.I. Joe, number 22 of volume one. This gives us what? The first appearance of Duke and Roadblock. And this book isn't that expensive, is it, Jack? No, this is a great buy. I'm asked all the time, people who know me, and if you're new watching this video series, maybe you haven't watched our channel on a regular basis, or you're new to the channel, one of our new subscribers, and we appreciate you being with us. I am a diehard G.I. Joe fan. You see, I've got the AK Mr. Bolo t-shirt on. The logo is based on G.I. Joe. And I'm regularly asked, what do I think are the G.I. Joe books that people should be looking for? This book, if before I talk about any other G.I. Joe book, is to me the best buy book out there right now. Um, there is no doubt that G.I. Joe number one has its merits. Tons of first appearances, first G.I. Joe issue there is, but it's that obvious pick and it always sells pretty well. This book it regularly is in bins because to be honest with you, most dealers out there don't realize that this carries the first appearances that it does. Yeah, you wouldn't think you'd get 22 issues in before you met Duke. No, absolutely not. And Duke in Roadblock, if you're not familiar, if you haven't seen those old G.I. Joe movies um, that, you know, didn't do that well, but that is Channing Tatum and The Rock. So you're talking about the two most important characters in the last film franchise. Well, they're the most important characters in the last film franchise because they're two of the most important characters on the G.I. Joe team. And there's no doubt with this rebooted, um, revamped G.I. Joe franchise and Hasbro universe we're going to get, Duke and Roadblock are going to be there. So this book is cheap. It's a two-for-one book. It's one to be on the lookout for right now. And it's the first of probably several G.I. Joe books we're going to talk about in the coming weeks. Then at number eight, staying with G.I. Joe, we get issue number 14. This is a good one because this is that first full appearance of Destro. Now, Jack and I, we talk a lot on this channel about cameo first appearance. We know where we stand, but we also talk about where the market stands, and that's where we're going with this one, right, Jack? 
That's right. Issue number 11 has a cameo appearance of Destro, but the market really likes this issue number 14. And it's really for obvious reasons. You get that great cover appearance. It's really obvious who this issue is about. And we get to see Destro. Now, Destro is Cobra Commander's right-hand man. He is the second largest villain in all of G.I. Joe. And Cobra Commander, of course, first appears in issue number one. So that's the thing about like Snake Eyes and, Co and Cobra Commander and the Baroness, who are probably three of the most marketable characters long term within the G.I. Joe franchise. You're knocking them all out with issue number one on top of it being the first issue and the first appearance of G.I. Joe in general. And don't believe any of those listings that list those DC Comics issues as the first appearance of G.I. Joe. That's not the G.I. Joe, a real American hero, the, the Hasbro toy line, that everything that you're going to see in the future is based on. That begins with G.I. Joe number one uh, from Marvel Comics. So other than that, I really feel like this, this issue number 14, the Destro first full appearance, um, is that next best issue. Destro can be done really cool. There's a lot that can be done with the character. Uh, you know, Cobra Commander is a lot of times shrouded in mystery. We may meet Destro as a villain first. I, I think that this is another book priced similarly to what we saw with issue number 22. Um, it really, really is out there for the taking. So be on the lookout for that one as well. Now, Jack just mentioned DC Comics, and at number seven, we have a DC Comics, and we're talking about Legends number three. This book took off when the Suicide Squad movie was in development and coming out. It's kind of died down a little bit, but either way, this is a key issue that I think everyone should have in their boxes, and since it's died down, it's really affordable again, isn't it, Jack? So yeah, Brian, I actually know some members of the speculation community who really discovered what this book was and its importance that it was truly the first appearance of the modern suicide squad the suicide squad that we know today from comics and from the first feature film um, previously suicide squad had existed within the pages of dc comics but it was really a different concept so that suicide squad that everybody knows today that's really the first appearance and yeah because this, this one has what blockbuster bronze tiger captain boomerang deadshot yeah. and enchantress and rick flack yeah, and really played up on the whole aspect of them not having a choice in this matter. That They were really, this was the whole Argus angle. Amanda Waller first appears two issues before in Legends number one. And we know Amanda Waller's whole role within Suicide Squad. So this book is a major, major key if Suicide Squad is believed to be something that is a property to believe in. Then sticking with DC and coming in hot at number six, we get that Firestorm number one. This gives us the first appearance of Ronnie Raymond and Martin Stein Firestorm, right? Absolutely. And here's the thing. This is a character that we've already seen play out on the CW network and people really receive this character well. To me, that's a DCW shows are gonna be great litmus test for how really do people feel about some of these B and C rate characters. I think really the secret sauce to comic book investing at this point is not the blue chip stuff. Everybody knows that. Um, I almost roll my eyes when I see like, you know, oh yeah, you know, invest in Daredevil number one. Yeah, if you've got the money, invest in Daredevil number one, that is, a great book, but the reality is that doesn't apply to most of you. So most of you are looking for where is their ROI? What are books? What's that next book down the line? And I think that we're gonna talk about a group of books coming up in this part portion of the list. There's a lot of first appearances, a lot of number ones that I think are fit that bill. And this is one of them. This is not a major character. This isn't, you know, this isn't ever been an A character by any stretch of the imagination. But the character played really well on television. And you know, the CW doesn't have a monster budget. So the firestorm that we inevitably could see in a television or in a movie would probably exceed what we saw on the television show. And the television show worked really well. The whole duality of Ronnie Raymond and Martin Stein. I thought maybe that would be confusing for a television audience. Honestly, they picked right up on it. it. Both actors played that role really well. It shows the fact that you could also get two very diverse actors to play that role in a movie franchise and allow an older actor to play Martin Stein, um, an actor who maybe missed their chance at a superhero franchise. So there's a lot of potential with this character. But you know why I like this book the most, Brian? It's like 20 bucks. It's, it is absolutely affordable. And it, this book has seen waves. Right when the CW stuff was debuting, this book was hot. 
Yeah, yeah, like all the Firestorm normal ones were hot. Even I, even the new 52 ones were. The prices of random villains of the week from the Firestorm series were selling for more back then than what Firestorm number one is selling for now. That That's mind-boggling. So that just tells me, similar to what we've talked about with these like already announced movie properties, this isn't been announced. It's something that you have to buy and really hold. But if you're looking for a long-term investment, this is a character we've already seen. This, that book has $100 potential. And if it can be a $100 book based off of a CW TV show, it can be a $100 or more book based off of a large movie production or a, a HBO Max type feature or something of that nature. We're now going to flip over to the bottom of that list. Coming in at number five, we're striking some gold with Booster Gold. Now, a lot of people know this first appearance of Booster Gold. One thing about this book, it's got a lot of first appearances in it. There's not, I mean, it's not super big characters, but if you look it up, there is a lot of first appearances in this book. And those are books I know a lot of people like to buy up, right? Yeah, absolutely. And now look, this book has a high print run. That's what all the detractors will always bring up about this book. I've seen the pictures of, of dealers with cases of this book from back in the day. There's no doubt. But Booster Gold is a cult popular character. This is one of those characters that I feel like if played right, could really ascend, um, could be an A-list character in the films, even though it's really a D-list character in the comics. And further evidence of that is the fact that how many times have we heard Booster Gold rumors over the last five or six years? It seems like every year, Booster Gold- Like every eight months. Right, is rumored for either a television show about him. He's going to be the next main character on Arrow or Flash. There's a movie in production. It's because Warner Brothers sees the potential in this character. At one point, John Cena was attached to possibly playing the character. We've heard a lot about this character. So because of that, where there's smoke, there's fire, right? you got to believe DC's been delayed. They've had issues. They're getting it uh, themselves together. Looks like they're going to have to drop Ezra Miller. Um, looks like Margot Robbie is out as Harley. Um, but honestly, I think all of that's good things. It's time to reboot everything and kind of start fresh and start new and, and get things going back in the right direction. But, you know, I, I really, really, really think that this is an example of a book where similar to what we said with Firestorm, you can plug and play everything. You're picking up a character, dirt cheap, with a track record, who you can buy and hold. And we already know what the prices of characters kind of from that era, regardless of print run, can hit once they're attached to a major property. And coming in at number four this week, we switch back over to Marvel for the second. We're talking about Nova number one. This is a book that skyrocketed about six months ago. Kind of come down a little bit, but still a key issue, still one to be on the lookout for, right? Yeah, and again, this is just the, the comic market cycle. This book skyrocketed with the news that Nova was going to be apparently showing up in something. But again, those rumors pop up similar to Booster Gold. Every eight months, we're talking about Nova showing up in something. We've, we've talked about it with multiple movies. It's an inevitability. Yeah, it's not an if, it's a win, right? Yeah, and we talked about on the first episode of this show, the Nova Corps and, and the value in buying those books. So, you know, those this book goes for considerably more than that. But you know, if we were talking Nova Corps and the value surrounding the character Nova, we were going to have to talk about this book. But at $40, I really think that this is some great long-term value. I'm seeing Raws go off $40, $45. I think that's a great buy. We've already seen, as you mentioned, this book Skyrocket hit that $150. Yeah, 9 were like $1,300. Bucks. It pissed me right. off because I was looking for one. Right. Well, they're out there now, Brian. Check now because they're yeah, out they're there. They're about 800 now from what yeah. I was looking at. And it's amazing how that happens. So- Now's the time to be keeping your eye on Nova. And I'll say one more thing before we move on to the next book. That's the thing about this list. This list doesn't necessarily mean you need to run out and buy these books right now. This is a buy list. This is a, book, a list of books to keep your eye on. The time to buy this Nova book may not be right now. It may be three weeks from now. It may be two weeks from now. But if you've got your eye on it, if you're paying attention, you can get it at that lowest possible price. Yeah, this is one of those ones that I really wanted a 9.8. But when you're talking about money, right? I might be content with a 9.6 just because the differential in a 0.2 yes. is huge. So, I don't know. I might buy the 9.6 for hundreds of dollars less. We'll see. 
And also be on the lookout for that CBCS copy because a lot of times those can be had for a song. Yeah, when it comes to PC, I don't, I don't discriminate between CGC and CBCS at all. Nope, not at, not at all. And at number three this week, we're going back over to DC with Black Lightning number one. This gives us the first appearance of Black Lightning and this also, as well as some other first appearances, right? Yeah, this is a character I honestly didn't grow up really having as a part of my comic mythos. And all of a sudden, the Black Lightning um, TV series was coming up, started to pay attention, grabbed a couple number ones, flipped a couple number ones, made some good money and felt good about it. But I got to tell you, the character on the television show has come off extremely strong. If you're not a fan of CW TV shows, I would tell you to give this one a try because it has a very different feel from the other CW shows. Um, Black Lightning is a street level hero and most of his stories take place late in his career. So you're, you're, you're telling the story of, think about like Dark Knight Batman, you know, a man who has physical injuries, who, um, who also has kind of like emotionally dealt with the duality of his life for so long he's over it um you're talking about a character who also now has started to see his superpowers spread to his children and not necessarily wanting that life for them so this character has played really well and the reason why i like this character long term is his relationship to batman in the justice league um, he really is a sounding board, a kind of voice of reason. Um, he is kind of like that backup leader. He's that, uh, you know, that right hand man doesn't always want to regularly be a part of things. It's not necessarily his scene. He just wants to handle his neighborhood. But when time comes and there's a crunch time situation, the Justice League will kind of pull him into things. Now they've got their little Justice League of America set up going on the CW network. Um, and that may slow things down with this character, but I really think that's why this is a great buy. These books were over $100. They're down as low as $25. Then coming in at number two this week, we get Fantastic Four number 46. This was another issue that like skyrocketed right when that in humans news and right before that tv show took place it's kind of dropped down a little bit but here we get what the first full appearance of black bolt right absolutely and you know the in humans first appear in issues of fantastic four 44 45 46 47 so you get in kind of like this run of issues that are all relevant if you're interested in the inhumans i am alerting you to the two in this week that I think are the best buying opportunities right now. Obviously, 45 is a great book. It's a major key, but it's always going to be a book that people pay attention to because it's the first appearance of the humans as a team um, and that as an entity. And that is always going to serve as kind of like the marker book. But there is no humans. Nothing matters with the inhumans if you're not talking about Black Bolt. He's the most marketable character. He's the character that's kind of front and center of everything in humans. He's the leader of the inhumans the king of the Inhumans. So ultimately, this is the book, yet it is not priced that way. This is book is frequently, frequently, multiple times less than what 45 goes for. Um, definitely more than 47, which we talked about earlier uh, for his brother. But I'm actually surprised what the price of these are. Now, there's some rumors about Maximus showing up in the, in the Miss Marvel show. I think that it would make sense with her tie to the Inhumans. But here's the thing. If Maximus shows up, Black Bolt is not far behind. There were rumors previously of Vin Diesel playing the character. I don't know if that's dead now that he's bloodshot or what the deal is. But either way, I think that the fact that they were, have had so much discussion, it just really seems like Marvel wants to do something with the Inhumans. This is a great book to buy. And here's the thing. Even if they never end up doing anything with this character, this book is cheap. It's a major Fantastic Four key issue. I think for long term in comics, it's one OG collectors are always going to value. So it's a great book to buy and have in your collection. And then at our top spot this week, we get another twofer. That's right, coming in, we're going to call it 1A. We have Secret Wars number one. We hear a lot of times about how people don't want Marvel event books, but this was one of those ones back in the day that a lot of people liked and still resonates to today, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to talk about two books here. Um, we're going to break them down. We'll break them down, as you mentioned, 1A and 1B. Um, but really, these are two intertwined plays. Um, we're talking about first, Secret Wars. Now, people, been, like you mentioned, people have been talking about Secret Wars. It really seems like Secret Wars is really lined up to be that next Marvel event. It just makes so much sense. You look at what Infinity Gauntlet did, you look at what uh, I I Infinity War, which was a much higher printed book, did, but what the multiplier of what it sold for based on where it started at, great, great money, great ROI. Um, I compare this book to Infinity Gauntlet. I think that we will see a very similar pricing structure when this book gets hot. And judging by that, you're like a third of where this book really can mature to be. Um, so I think this is one to really be on the lookout for. Plus, vintage toy collecting is hot. This is a, a series that was really created um, to support a toy line. And I think that that whole history, that whole lore really plays well into this. They're gonna make a, at some point, a, a um, Marvel toy biz, uh, the toys that made us episode there that all that has to happen in that this could get popular just for that reason alone but factor in the fact that I really believe you're going to see a movie called Avengers Secret War or Marvel Secret War or something to that degree um, this is a $20 book right now uh, I frequently find it in five dollar boxes so it's something to keep an eye out for right and then coming in at 1b following up with Secret Wars number one we get that iconic cover, that origin of the alien symbiote and Secret Wars number eight. So this is one of the things that we're going to talk about regularly on the show is some themes. You're going to start to notice as these shows progress week to week that there's some patterns, right? There's some things that clearly um, I'm a believer in. And um, as my man Nico pointed out, uh, Nico Time over on the uh, Comic Book Wars podcast, you know, I'm actually very positive about Sony and Marvel's relationship. I think there's just too much money to be made. And furthermore, I'm actually pretty positive about what Sony can do as a film franchise, um, as a film company, and what they can do with these properties. So I am hopeful that they will be able to be in constant communication with Marvel and make sure that whatever things Sony has going on, whether it's Morbius, whether it's uh, Venom, whether it's Spider-Man, that they're really working with Marvel to make sure that if they're gonna have things kind of line up, that it lines up well. So I'm willing to take this Secret Wars bet and double down and say that we know that Tom Holland has to don the black suit at some point, right? It's got it's to happen, right? If you're going to do a film franchise with Tom Holland, he's got to wear the black suit at some point. What better time to do that than would be the Secret Wars event? So if you believe the Secret Wars is going to happen, if you're with me on 1A, if you're sitting there at home and you're like, yeah, you know what? What he's saying is makes sense. Secret Wars movie has to happen. Then why not? Why wouldn't that be a moment? If I was Kevin Feige, the very moment that we decide we're going ahead on a Secret Wars movie, I need that moment where Spider-Man has that black suit. It's got to happen. So that book right now, hot book, regularly trades all over the place, popular issue. And of course, we can get into the argument about the black suit, right? But this one is the one I think that would be the best because of the Secret Wars tie-in. But to be honest with you, be on the lookout. You're probably going to see some other black suit stuff popping up on this list in the future. But either way, this book right now, Raw, is trading like $40 to $60. That is undervalued for this book. And this is another book where I say, Brian, even if this never pans out, this is a major key. When you buy books like this, you can get gains just from the fact that as time goes by, these books don't become less important. They only become more important and they only dry up on the market. And people always want these books to keep in their collection. So you're not taking a lot of risk buying a Secret Wars 8. Yeah, plus it's one of those covers that's been swiped how many times? I mean, we just recently saw it with Magnificent Miss Marvel. They had that wrestling, that NWO comic or whatever that swiped it. That's yep. been swiped, homaged, whatever you want to call it over and over again, and for good reason, because this is one of those iconic comics to be on the lookout for. Absolutely. So there it is, guys. Those are the top 10 back issues to be on the lookout to buy this week. We're going to have another one next week as well. Let us know in the comments what do you guys think of the back issues. Do us a favor. Also, click that thumbs up. 
And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button as well as that bell notification, get notified of all these videos, hit the channel. We have a great amount of content coming up, don't we, Jack? Oh, absolutely. We got stuff planned out. We are going to take care of you guys. We know you're stuck at home. We know you're yearning for content. We know you're seeing new comic books get halted, all this negative news in the comic market. We want to brighten your day. We want to talk about everything that's positive going on in the comic market. We want to show you guys what we see. And what we see is a lot of good going on. So we're going to highlight that. We're going to have plenty of new shows for you guys in the coming weeks. Right, and I also want to shout out everyone that's in the live chat right now. Week in and week out, you guys are rocking with us. Definitely appreciate that. With that being said, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.